What's going on YouTube? It's Bobby, that geek dad. And today, after a hectic month of October, I have my thoughts and review of the iPhone 8 Plus. In any normal year, the 8 and 8 Plus would just be a regular iPhone launch. But with the drastic change that is the iPhone 10, many people are wondering, why do these even exist? So let's talk about the Honda Accord of smartphones, the iPhone 8 Plus. The design is the same since the iPhone 6, and when you talk about the home button, it's the same since the original iPhone. Since last year's launch, everyone has wondered why Apple stuck with the same boring design for an extra two years, and now we know. It's because of their focus with the iPhone X. The only real difference you can see is the glass back for wireless charging and a very minimal aesthetic change to the rear camera hump. The glass back makes the 8 and 8 Plus heavier and not feel like it will fly out of your hand. These changes are so small, your iPhone 7 and 7 Plus cases still work with the 8 and 8 Plus. Still talking about things that are the same, the screen is the same size LCD panel with the same great clarity for the iPhone 8 Plus and the 8. One slight change is how the screen reacts to ambient light around you with True Tone. True Tone is in the current iPad Pro lineups and uses the ambient light sensor on the front of the phone to change the screen to look like real paper depending on the light you are in. It's one of those nice underrated pieces of tech as it works for you without you having to do anything. The home button is the same and works just as fast. There's no headphone jack, same lightning port, volume rocker, sleep wake, and silent switch. So with all of these things that are the same, what's so different? And again, why does this phone even exist? First to change is that there is wireless charging because of the glass back. Yes, Android devices had wireless charging for a while, even going back to the early days of Windows phones and the Palm Pre. So now, the iPhone has it. While it's slower than plug-in charging, it's more convenient by just placing your 8 or 8 Plus down on a wireless charging pad. Next are the speakers. Yes, they are supposed to be the same, but you can tell they are much louder when playing games and streaming movies and video. They still get very tinny the higher the volume gets, but the change is since they are louder, you don't need to ramp up the volume and get into that tinny area of the speakers. A great change you won't see is the A11 Bionic chip. It's in the 8, 8 Plus, and the iPhone 10. Everything seems to move smoother, especially with high graphic gaming, and battery life is better with the 8 Plus than it is with the 7 Plus, even though the 8 Plus has a smaller battery. If you want to get into the weeds about the chip, it is arguably the best smartphone processor out now, and probably for the next year or two with its benchmark scores. But benchmarks are not the type of reviews I do. Probably the change that matters the most to people are cameras. According to Apple, they are the same, front and rear, as the 7 Plus. But because of the A11 chip that I talked about earlier, processing power helps the optics to produce better photos for both sets of cameras. For 99% of people, the 7 Plus is still a great camera to have on the go. The 8 Plus definitely improves the overall dynamic range of colors, clarity, and sharpness from the iPhone 7 Plus. It is noticeable to most consumers, but if you are coming from the 7 Plus, it's not something vitally important. A crazy change that is not important now, but probably decades in the future, is the ability for the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus to film video at 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. Right now, most people are filming at 1080p Full HD at 30 or 60 frames per second. Filming at 4K will future-proof the clarity of your videos so that any of your adult kids or grandkids see in the future won't be so outdated with 4K. Another crazy aspect of this is that to get this feature in a high-end point-and-shoot or DSLR camera, you have to pay $1,500 or more, and those don't send text messages or make phone calls. Photo-wise, the biggest change with the 8 Plus, not the 8 and 7 Plus, is the rear camera portrait mode. With the A11 chip, Apple's camera software attempts to mimic professional studio lighting with different modes, natural, studio, contour, stage, and stage mono lighting. I say attempts because for 9 out of 10 times, they all work really well except for stage mono lighting. In my opinion, it's still very much in beta mode as it works well 5 to 6 times out of 10. 
The nice thing about portrait mode is when you take a photo in any of these modes, you can edit that photo afterward to any of the other modes. Don't like stage mono on your photo? Change it to stage lighting or natural. Want to experiment with your photo taken in natural? Change it to stage mono lighting. All done after you take the photo. With the front facing camera, this portrait mode is not available unless you get the iPhone 10. Does the A11 chip make your selfies better? Yes, especially in low light. This also can be said for the rear camera in low light as well. And this is a test of the front facing camera on the iPhone 8 Plus. Um, the only, it's a kind of a quiet part, the only noise you're probably going to hear is maybe a little construction that's probably a good half mile away. It's also a state road and some birds. It's a test to see how shaky it is as I'm walking down this path. Stop and kind of give a spin around of everything that's around me. And we'll keep on going. So there's a lot that is the same, but even less that's different. So why does the 8 and 8 Plus exist? Change. iPhones have never been drastic about change, but subtle about it year after year. But with the iPhone 10, Apple is introducing change that a lot of people might not be comfortable with, but still want to upgrade from their 5S, 6, or 6S. This is what the 8 and 8 Plus are for, comfortable upgrades. Now, if you have the 7 and 7 Plus, should you upgrade? Depends. If the battery is still good for you, you still have no performance issues, and you still love the pictures you take, then I say stick with the 7 or 7 Plus. The same can be said for the 6S and the 6S Plus. Smartphones are still tools, and one should never replace a tool unless it can no longer do what you need it to do. So if you are the person that doesn't like sharp change in your everyday life, which your phone is a part of, but want a solid upgrade, then Apple has you covered with the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. Great performance, reliability, but with a very boring design, like a Honda Accord. Thanks for watching everyone. Please make sure to hit the like button if this video helped you out. Subscribe for more videos like my thoughts and review of the iPhone 10 coming soon and a comment with any questions you might have. So as always, be excellent to each other and I will talk to you in the next video.